Yo, what's going on guys? Have a good night. Back. Today we're back at it again with 17 more things only Clash of Clans OGs might remember. This is supposed to be a follow-up to a video I did a while back, so in case you haven't watched that one, links will be down below and it'll also be at the end of the video. This time around, I read a lot of you guys' comments and trust me, there is a lot of OGs in the comments. If you guys have more, feel free to drop them down below for a future episode. Perhaps. We'll call it probably 17 even more. <laughs> so, with that being said, let's get right into it. Troops being killed when army camps were destroyed in a defense. God, you have to be a serious OG to remember this one. This one is as old and nostalgic as it gets. So, it's basically what it sounds like. If you had an army trained and went offline, and then you happened to get attacked, if the enemy destroyed the army camps, it also destroyed any troops that were in it. Oh god, I'm glad this was changed. You have to keep in mind training armies took hours, so imagine waiting 6 hours for your army only to go offline for 2 seconds and losing all your troops. I would have been so angry. Thank god this is no longer the case. When you had to go into every barracks individually to train an army. <sighs> Reminding me of memories that have been lost throughout the years. I'm not sure how long ago this was, but I'd like to say it was changed sometime in 2014 or 2015, so yeah, sometime around there. But if you didn't know, in order to train an army, you had to tap on every barracks and fill that barracks with what you wanted that specific barracks to train. So one barracks could be training archers for 30 minutes, and the other barracks could be training golems for 2 hours. None of it was connected. I remember trying to balance what I needed to train between barracks to make things faster. Like, alright, I'm training go wipe, so I'm gonna put a golem here, a golem there, a P.E.K.K.A in the third one, and maybe fill the last one with wizards. <laughs> yes, it was super annoying. But after years of doing this, everyone just sorta of got used to it. it. You didn't really think about it. Now when this was changed a few years back, it made it so that every barracks was now connected into one screen. So now you can train your entire army and all barracks would work at the same time. Things were just made easier and faster. When Tell Hall 7s didn't have Dark Elixir drills and could only get Barbarian King if they looted their way to 10,000 Dark Elixir. This list keeps digging into my forgotten memories. So, when Dark Elixir was introduced, it was added to Town Hall 7 and above. You could also get the Barbarian King at Town Hall 7, but there was a catch. Although you had a Dark Elixir storage and you could collect Dark Elixir, you had no drill. You had to go attack for it. I certainly remember this and man, it was the hardest grind for any Town Hall 7 at the time. Like, if you got the Barbarian King, it was a huge flex. Like I said in the last video, I remember dropping lightnings on people's Dark Elixir storages, when that was possible, of course. But I also remember buying an iTunes card from Walgreens, after I had just got paid from my summer job when I was like, what, 14? So, uh, yeah, a lot of good memories here. Eventually, Town Hall 7 did get a Dark Elixir drill later on, and made the process a bit easier. Clan troops donating it used to walk straight into the ocean. <laughs> this is the most random thing I saw in the comment section, but it's so nostalgic. I have to include this one. I used to zoom out and watch them walk off into the ocean and then wonder, huh, where'd they go? It's just water. There's no boat. I need answers. Well, we never got answers, but one thing I know for sure is that it's not the fact that they used to walk into the ocean, it's just a thought of how long ago this was and how easy it is to forget this was a thing. I'm not sure when exactly this was changed, but I believe it was sometime anywhere from 2016 to 2018, where instead of walking straight into the water, they now had a separate path they go into and, you know, walk into the forest and then just disappear. The jump spell did not work with every troop. Surely, OGs remember the days when a jump spell was a little bit more complicated than it is today. So basically, a level 1 jump spell only allowed troops with 4 housing space or less to jump. So for example, barbarians, archers, goblins, wizards, and you had to upgrade it to level 2 for it to allow bigger troops like giants and pekkas. This was all changed in June of 2013, where the jump spell now worked on everything and upgrading the spell would simply increase its duration. This is still how it works 
to this day. It wasn't necessarily bad. In fact, I kind of find that the previous version of the jump spell was actually pretty cool. It gave you a bigger reason to upgrade that spell. But it's nice that it's been changed to make things easier. And uh, yeah, but man, the old days were weird and super nostalgic. Pekkas would be affected by spring traps in the first version of the game. Okay, this was super long ago. I couldn't even find gameplay. This is how old it is. I remember mentioning this in one of my facts videos and spending hours looking for any evidence, but I just couldn't. So I'm sorry, I can't show you the P.E.K.K.A being flung across the map by a spring trap. It would have been cool, but I just can't find anything. But what we do know is that this actually used to be a thing because in the patch notes for the first updates, they were given immunity to spring traps. It's crazy to think that your powerful and expensive P.E.K.K.A.s would just fling to their death by a simple trap on the ground. Thank God this is one of the first things they changed in the game because P.E.K.K.A.s would have been a little less useful if they were still affected by spring traps today. When Clan Castle troops couldn't jump over walls. I'm pretty sure this was in 2012 and they changed it in 2013, but basically, if you put your Clan Castle in a compartment like most bases do, the Clan Castle troops couldn't leave that area because they couldn't jump walls. It's weird to think about because today they jump all over the place and luring them is part of most strategies, but Back then, you couldn't lure them. They would just sit in their place unless you made an open base design, which wasn't very good, but it did seem to help a little bit at the time. So maybe that's why those bases became popular, I don't know. When the level of troops was presented by stars instead of numbers. If you ever looked at old screenshots or videos, you've probably noticed the troop levels were purple stars. If you had a level 2 troop, it had 2 stars, and each level was another star. So in other words, if you had a lot of stars in a troop, you were about to demolish a base. This was later changed, I believe in 2015, to now show a little square with a number on it. I don't know which one I like better, but seeing those stars in old gameplay brings back a whole lot of memories. It is super nostalgic. The time you couldn't select a row of walls and had to do each individually. Okay, apparently I forgot this was ever a thing in the last video, and that's because this was changed in March of 2013, so that's around the time I started playing, so it was easy to miss for me. Basically, before base links, before the edit tool, and even before building your base manually for hours, there was one thing even worse, as if it already wasn't bad enough. You had to move every wall one at a time. Yes, you could not select a row of walls to easily move a few of them. So when building a base manually, which was already complicated as we explained in the last video, you had to move your walls one by one. Imagine how annoying this was. Changing your base was literally like a two hour job. In October of 2013, they added the base edit tool. So if you had been playing since day one, building a base was the most annoying thing for about a year and three months. Fourth Mortar. When they added a fourth mortar from Town Hall 8 to 10, everyone was looking for an updated base. Okay, Clash of Clans has added more new buildings and defenses since then, but this time was the first major time. I could be wrong, but I believe Town Hall 8, 9, and 10 all had three mortars, and then Supercell announced they'd all get a fourth one. I'm pretty sure it was to balance everything out, but I also believe Cemetery played a role as well. We already had four air defenses, four wizard towers, four teslas, four of a lot of buildings, and the mortar was left at, for some reason, three. So it seemed logical to complete the pattern, right? I even remember uploading a lot of bases with a badge at the top of the thumbnail that said four mortars because it was rather a new thing to experience at the time. So uh, yeah, I knew I had to include this one. No loot bonuses. We've had loot bonuses for years. I think they were added in early 2013 along with leagues, but before that, there used to be no loot bonuses because there were no leagues. 
with no leagues, how are you going to calculate any bonuses, <laughs> you know? I'm glad they added this league system though because these bonuses be pretty sweet, eh? Now that we're on the topic of leagues though, I also wanted to mention the old league badges. It just brings back so many memories and I remember the day they updated these, it felt so weird to get used to it, but they, uh, they look pretty nice. When goblins came before giants in the barracks. This one is a rather small one, but I thought it was still worth a mention. If you played in the early days, surely you remember unlocking goblins before giants. But today, the giants are before the goblins in the barracks. And if you started a new account, you might have been confused. Like, huh, why am I unlocking the giant first? Wasn't I supposed to get the goblins first? This is because they changed it to where you unlock giants first. When you attacked a player, it would show how long you activated the opponent's shield. Okay, this one isn't all too big of a deal, but like he said, it's a forgotten thing. Basically, when you attack someone and got enough percentage or just the town hall at one point, a message will pop up saying that you activated the opponent's shield for 12 or 16 hours. It's one of those things you probably don't even care about until somebody mentions that it was removed and you double check to make sure that it was, in fact, removed. Yeah, you can check for yourself and this pop-up never appears anymore. Like the commenter said, it is one of those forgotten things. Long times to find a match. Okay, we all know that the higher you go in trophies, the more you have to wait to find a base. Usually. And that is until you eventually hit Legends League. But did you know that back in the day, searching for a player was even slower? Whoa! So the way matchmaking works today is when you hit find a match, it'll start to queue up bases it will show you once you hit next. That way, you don't have to wait for the game to actually search for a base. Although, it isn't perfect. The queuing system takes longer at higher trophies, and that's why you see this screen when you click next too fast, because the game can't keep up. Now, in 2012, there was no queuing for this system, so every time you hit next, you guessed it, the game would search for a base. This was a lot slower from today, and thank god, I'm a little bit of an impatient person. Naming yourself you to troll people. Okay, I think you can still name yourself you, but if you're trying to troll anyone, it's not gonna work, and this is because the chat has changed since when this troll was actually effective. They made one small change, and it's that the color of your name is now like, uh, what is it? Green. Before, it was the same like beige or orange color as anyone else in the chat. But let me explain how this used to work before. Since everyone's name was the same color, you would name yourself you, and then the opponent would think that he was typing when in fact it was you. <laughs> this is too complicated to explain. <laughs> Later on though, they ended up making it so that your name appears green in the chats, so now you know it's you. The times the king and queen would be lured half across the map. <sighs> These were bad times. Similar to luring out clan castles today, you could do the same thing with heroes. I mean, you can still do it, but not the same way. Like, they wouldn't walk across the whole map. They have to be in a specific range. Back then, if you were trying to lure a king in the far east position and you were in the far west position, then guess what? You could still lure him because once he was activated, he would follow anything across the entire map. I definitely don't miss these days because it basically made heroes useless sometimes. One of the first things you did was lure the heroes and the clan castle troops and get it over with in like 10 seconds. That definitely wasn't a way to play. Today, it's a bit more complicated and it requires a lot of planning. Alright, so there's one more thing I want to talk about, and if I sound different, that's because my dumbass forgot to record the last one, so I had 16 and not 17, and I was like, oh, yeah, so I'm back. 
two days later. <laughs> this one is when you had to go to a goblin map and dump your troops right there because you couldn't remove the troops from your army camps or clan castle. Like there was no option to remove anything. This one is truly an OG one. So guys, I think that should be it for this episode. Well, it's not really an episode. I, I don't know. I might make another one. Just, it really depends on how many OG things there are out there. Like I said in the beginning, feel free to drop down below some of your things that you may remember from the good old days that are not super obvious. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a gaming out. Peace!